when I was asked to come and say a few words here and, and to and to like share something with you today, um, I was you know I was thinking about what it is that might be interesting or what it is that from my experience I could sort of share with you, and I kind of got to thinking that. Um, Perhaps the fact that I've always done things a little bit differently and that I've been good at doing things a little bit differently is perhaps something that I'd like to talk about a little bit. So I started to think a little bit about, that's a lot of uh, little bits, but um, I started to think what it was that I did that was different. And um, I, I started to realize that in most things that I've done along the way, there have been a few um, things that sort of keep repeating themselves. Okay. Um, I used to stutter very, very badly. I was a, uh, what they call a violent stutterer. And um, um, I started through my high school well into uh, college in the States. And as a consequence to that, um, I spent my life, my formative years, more as an observer than a partaker because it's because it was easier to sit back and watch rather than to get up and embarrass yourself and uh, interestingly enough the people that you're talking to embarrass them also because everybody gets slightly awkward about that and being an observer um, I think it as I saying it sort of allowed me to step back to sit back a little bit and to observe the world around me and to observe my um, sort of interactions with people with with I think a bit of an objective set of eyes rather than a highly emotional set of eyes so um, that was one thing the other thing is that I noticed that my handicap made me very uh, vulnerable okay and I realized that the way I looked at the world around me and the way I interacted with people sort of came from that area of vulnerability. I learned to embrace that and um, I wasn't afraid to be vulnerable and I wasn't afraid to observe things with that. Okay, And I think when you're able to do that, um, you know, this is all now in hindsight I can kind of say this, that when you're able to observe with vulnerability and you bring a certain amount of humility to it, okay, um, you, you like really start to understand. And I think what that teaches you then is tolerance. And that to me is a fantastic thing because when you have all those things working together, you actually develop um, the ability to look at and embrace attention to detail. <coughs> so I think one of the things that I've always been is a good observer okay the other thing um, that happened as a uh, stutterer that as I was saying it's very easy to sit back silently and disengage from the world around you and I knew that rather than embarrass others and you know and also myself because it was awkward very often that I knew that if I was to partake of life and I knew that if I was going to engage the world around me, then I had to force myself to engage people. I had to force myself to get out there and talk, okay, and to express myself regardless of what other people thought, the way other people reacted, okay. And you need to push yourself, well, I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone and into situations that challenged me, okay and into situations where in spite of that there was a high risk of failure and in fact when you really think about it we all fear taking risks because they are synonymous with the fear of failure and it's the reason why in general we don't do foolish things so what did I do uh, my second or third year in college in the States I spent my summer as a door-to-door -door vacuum cleaner salesman selling appliances to the Amish in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. As you know, the Amish don't buy appliances. So um, 
for me, that was very interesting because, well, I mean, I had a zero sales record, which was kind of interesting. But I think more importantly, it, it, it you know, I pushed myself into a, a situation where it was either sink or swim, okay? And I chose to swim. And I think I've done this a lot. I always have put myself into these uh, sink or swim situations. Perhaps I have this uh, perverse need to fail, but I always choose to swim. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Then, you know, when I look back on uh, various decisions and stuff that I've made, um, and choices that I've done, I, I sense that there's always been a sense of foolishness, uh, a certain sense of naivete, uh, a certain, certain amount of ignorance that's uh, sort of shrouded all these uh, decisions. When I first set up my first restaurant under the over here in Bombay, um, this is back in 92, everybody said that, oh, a Western restaurant will never work. The only thing that sells here is Indian and Chinese. And I got to thinking, you know, that it's like saying you go to a city and everybody only wears red. And I thought to myself that people are wearing red for only two reasons. Either the shops only sell red or everybody only likes the color red. And I said to myself, I don't buy the fact that everybody only likes red. You know, it's like, what if the shops sold blue? Market research would have told you, however, that only red will work. So my point is that if you want to stand out, okay, it's very important that you need to be the blue when everyone else is being red, all right? Don't be afraid to make that little distinction. It was incidentally also, it's the same way at, um, you know, which we opened Indigo. If today, with my years of experience, I got a project report like the one I wrote to build Indigo, I'd either throw it in the trash or I'd be very cautious about doing it because today with all the experience and knowledge, it really is too risky. So, so it's, it's not that I didn't think these things through clearly, I did, okay? Because they were really profound life decisions for me. They were very big decisions. But I thought through them with this sort of certain amount of, I would, you know, I like to call it foolishness in, in that I was able to throw away all of the um, things in my decision-making process, like rationale, like logic, like, like uh, you know, like everybody, um, like the knowledge base that you have, the walls of a box, and to really filter it all down to pure decision-making process. I know that sounds a little bit lofty, but that's, but that's sort of really what happened, okay? And, you know, it's, I, I kind of develop selective amnesia, if you want to call it, to, um, things that are logical, common sense, and, um, and you know, sort of steeped in, uh, in the confines of uh, blinkers that kind of make your whole thought process myopic. So it's, you know, if you can throw all this nonsense away and just really filter it down to, you know, will it work, will it not work, is, is, is like where you really come to the next thing, which is as Yoda said, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. All right. Coming to th the um, next thing is that, you know, we, we like moved to Bangalore in um, 1976 with the intention, sorry, was it 1976? 1996, I'm sorry. Um, this is what happens when you do this very, very quickly. But anyway, with the intention of setting up a restaurant. And, you know, it was the fastest growing city in Asia at the time. And we really hoped to make our life there. And so we started going out and watching consumption patterns of uh, people. And, you know, all the bar industry was hopping. You know, the uh, restaurants were doing great. And then you started to watch people. And while, you know, bars were packed, people weren't consuming. You know, you, you had a group of people steeped in conversation and everything else, but it was one pitcher of beer and a plate of kebabs. Not good if you want to open a restaurant. So, you know, we started to think. It gave us a little pause. And one night, I was having dinner with a friend, and we kind of put it all in perspective. 
we said that we said okay i have two more minutes i'm going to like really fast anyway so um we we like put it all in perspective and w- what we really worked out was that at the time the differential in real estate between bombay and bangalore was bombay rent was 150 bucks a square foot bangalore was 50 so the rest of doing a uh, a restaurant the cost of your equipment your labor your interiors all that roughly the same for both places so the real differential was rent and that 100 rupees a square foot was your rent so on a 3000 square foot average size place okay you're looking at 3 lakhs a month 30 days a month 10000 rupees a day so if you have a if you want to split it roughly lunch dinner that's 5000 5000 for roughly a 100 seat restaurant that it's 50 bucks ahead each meal which is roughly the price of a coke so the question to us was can we extract a coke more out of people in bombay than bangalore the answer was yes we moved in 2 weeks okay it was as simple as that so so the point is don't overthink things keep it simple okay and um you know i know again it sounds easy to say it when you are speaking from a point of having done it but it's true keep it simple you know it is important i think in life to to get advice from people when you when you are trying to set something up and by all means do that you must listen to everyone but finally listen to no one because only you know how to express your own vision only you can narrate your own dream okay no one else and so it's so don't dilute it by getting everybody's opinion don't let everybody second guess you on that okay i was lucky i had parents perhaps that encouraged me um their uh, their whole uh stick in life if you will uh, wh- uh, if you will was to encourage us um unequivocally without any um uh you know without any conditions except for one and that was that no matter what we did okay we were required to pour our heart into soul uh, our heart and soul into it so if if like we chose to be a carpenter we had to be a damn good one if you wanted to be a rocket scientist you you had to be a damn good one and so we were encouraged okay to basically take what we do seriously and never take ourselves seriously at all thanks and as yoda said ah that was my last one i'm sorry as you were said again try not you just have to do it or don't do it but there's no halfway so just do it all have fun